one man with one microphone who cannot resist tapping bowls, plates, glasses, doors, whenever, wherever. Welcome to the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another session of the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. In today's episode, I wanted to walk you guys through the process of making a five-year plan to become a trailer music composer. Now, uh, you may or may not know that I uh, once uh, endeavoured into writing books, and well, I plan to return to it because it's super fun. Um, I wrote them under my actual name, which is Rich Prin, um, rather than Richard Schreiber, which is my trailer music name. <laughs> Uh, and one of those books, uh, which admittedly I don't think was the best title, um, was called Live Your Ideal Life. Um, and the thing that triggered me to write that book was the fact that people kept asking me, firstly, how did you make it as a composer? And then, how do you do so much when you only work a few hours a day, you know? Uh, and all this stuff, basically, kind of like they were sub-questions from those two questions, basically about achieving your goals and being productive. Uh, and that's what that book is about. It's kind of ex- establishing sort of some basic mindset things, um, you know, uh, about being positive, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and then giving you this workbook. I produced this 100-page workbook all about kind of finding that life that you want and, and creating it and doing that every day. Uh, it was a great book, really enjoyed writing it, and it's helped some people, which is my ultimate goal, and that's what my goal is for this, is to help people. Uh, you can get it on Amazon, of course. Uh, it's called Live Your Ideal Life by Rich Prin, and uh, yeah, if you want to check it out, go check it out, you don't have to, what I'm going to walk you through today is an exercise about setting a five-year plan. So I had a message from uh, one, of, one of my fantastic listeners saying, Rich, really fascinated to know how you did your five-year plan that you mentioned in your training music course, would you mind doing an episode on that? Of course not, that sounds like fun. Uh, now, the five-year plan he's referring to is, uh, in one of the previous episodes, I mentioned that I had written a five-year plan and then tucked it away somewhere and then found it, I think it was about six years later, maybe five years, and I had achieved basically everything in that visualisation, in that list, but except the one thing wasn't, my house wasn't on a beach. You know, that's the only thing I didn't do. Um... Which I think, to be quite honest, I probably could have done. But uh, anyway, the five-year plan is all about visualising and manifesting. So those of you who don't know about manifesting, manifesting is the idea that our world and our universe is all energy. And that we can manifest make something manifest uh, through creating the right energetic situation or conditions we can manifest that thing into our physical life not like magicking a magicking a Porsche out of thin air but the idea is that you give positive energy towards something you want and that positive energy towards that thing you want means that that thing comes to you. It's pretty woo-woo, for those of you who, who know what woo-woo means. I think maybe in the States the term is crunchy, I don't know. Uh, but the idea being, it's focusing about on energy. So, how do you do this wonderful manifesting thing? This is, and I'm sure you know, this is a book in itself, you know. But the idea is, and in its absolute simplest, you think something and you will get something from the universe, whether that is a small thing or a big thing, that takes you to that thing. So let me give you an example. When I first moved back to my hometown uh, before my wife and I had our first child, 
uh, we moved back there and I said, do you know what? If only I could have a job in this town teaching so that I didn't have to commute, because this is when I used to teach music, so that I didn't have to commute to this other, this other school. And then I started thinking about that more, thinking, wouldn't it be great? And I kind of imagined these situations of having this job lo- nearby. And this is, what, this is the next step. And this is the important step that everyone ignores about manifesting. And whenever anyone does anything, says anything negative about manifesting, this is what they always ignore. This next step is you will then be given little crumbs from the universe that will take you to that thing. So at that point in time, I thought to myself, and my wife thought to herself, and we thought together to ourselves, wouldn't it be fun to do something in the evenings together? And then we mentioned about that, and someone mentioned a choir. It's called scratch choirs, you know, where you don't have to be able to be a great singer. You can just go up and have some fun. So we looked, we found this scratch choir that somebody mentioned, and we joined it. And, you know, we got to talking to whoever was there, and it was good fun. His songs were lovely. We spoke to Alison, the lady who ran this choir, and she turned to me and said, Hey, my husband and I teach at this college, and we're looking for a new tutor. You fancy have a, do you fancy coming in for a chat? And that led to me getting a teaching job in my hometown. And the crumb was the sudden desire to join a choir and talking, you know, and wanting to make friends, wanting to make friends with the people there and talking to the lady who runs it. Now, you can brush it off as coincidence if you like. That's fine. You're perfectly entitled to it. I would happily call it a coincidence. Um, but I would also say that there was an element of activity of positive action involved that led to that thing being manifested in my life. And you can do all sorts of fun little tests with this, you know, and, you know, manifest a new pair of socks. <laughs> you know, why not? Uh, you know, I really want a new pair of socks. And then you start thinking about those, that wonderful feeling of putting new socks on. And you never know, somebody might say, hey, you want to come out? Yeah, actually, they probably would not do that now. Somebody, somebody might buy you a pair of socks. You don't, you don't know. The, the how isn't important, but the, the feeling, focusing on the feeling of it, putting positive a- uh, attention to it, and following those little breadcrumbs. So anyway, I have digressed a little bit into a, a conversation on manifesting. Um, <clears throat> look it up if you want to. There's an amazing book called E Squared by Pam Grout, which is kind of like a beginner's thing on it. Uh, explains it really nicely. If you're really interested in this idea of the, the, the world of energy, then you should check out a book called The Field. Unfortunately, I can't remember the name of the author, but that was really cool. Um, and, yeah, so anyway, manifesting. Five-year plan. So, what do you do to get this five-year plan off and running? And what you do is this. You don't think to yourself, what will I have in five years? How many cars? How many houses? You think to yourself, what would my day look like? What would I be doing on a day-to-day basis? And you describe your perfect day in as much detail and focusing on the feeling of that day as much as possible. You know, I wake up with the sun streaming into our bedroom and I feel so peaceful. I can feel the crisp white sheets. I can hear the kids playing in their bedroom. The smell of coffee is rising up the stairs. You know, this type of thing, focusing on sensations and feelings. And you write your perfect day. And I say perfect with air quotes around the perfect, because, you know, as, as most of you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not keen on the idea of perfect. Maybe best day is the best way to describe it. What was your best day, you know? And I, uh, and I've done this, uh, I've done this several times, and almost every time it's come true. You know, I, 
the house that my wife and I live in now is almost identical to the one I visualised five years ago. In fact, we did a vision board and the, the rooms on our vision board were the... Like, it's shocking how similar they are. Yeah, OK, I know, you could be like, well, that's because fashions are trends, and obviously the magazines were putting in the trends in the magazine, and then people were painting their houses in that way. Yeah, OK, OK, Mr Moany Cynic Man, or woman. Uh, I don't want to hear you moaning. I want to hear you scribbling, writing down your best day. Even if you don't believe in this, uh, in manifesting, even if you don't believe in it, it's a nice exercise to give you a sense of peace and a sense of excitement. You know, and you think about it, who would you see? What would you eat? What would you smell? What would you see? What would you feel? The feeling is really important. And you make sure that when you're writing it, you feel it in your body now, in this present moment. Because as we know, as musicians, things that are of like frequency will vibrate together. That's the other idea of manifesting. So if we vibrate in a positive frequency, you will bring positive things to you. It's like when you play, play an E string on guitar and then you look at the other strings that have elements of an E, you know, including the overtones, within it they vibrate. So the B string will vibrate, the E string will vibrate. To an extent, the A, you know, the G, and you'll see, and that's how the, the you know, the Norwegian Hardanger fiddle works, with those resonant strings underneath, those sympathetic resonating strings vibrate in alignment with the, what is being played above. And that is what we are doing here. We are becoming a sounding board of positivity towards the things that we want. And then out in the world, whether they are there or not, they start to vibrate. <laughs> I know I'm going space crazy, but, uh, well, that's, I don't think I am. Uh, but this is what I have done. And this is, I am answering this listener's question in the most honest way I can. And this is how I did my five-year plan. The th I think it's three times I've done it. I haven't done one recently, but that is how I have done it working on a day and the feeling and then what you notice is because you're working on the feeling you then start to picture the room that you're in you then start to picture the things after you know oh the coffee i've got a nice coffee machine oh the other oh, the, oh, the the lovely crisp sheets oh, i've got like a massive double super king uh, super king with beautiful sort of hotel crisp white sheets and I've got one of those sort of floor-to-ceiling bedroom windows. Oh, this is this is awesome because the light's streaming in. Because you focus in the details of feeling, you then start to picture the physical things. You know, you go down into your studio that's that's full of light and comfort and things that inspire you, and then you'll start to think those things that inspire you will start to pop up on the wall. Like, oh, this beautiful painting. Oh, this beautiful part. Oh, this old instrument that I've got. You know, and. And it just sort of gradually falls into place. Write this out from the moment you wake up, as if, sorry, on your best day, the moment you wake up on that best day to the moment you go to sleep on your best day. And in my book, uh, Live Your Ideal Life, I talk about then sculpting your best week. And other things like that, you know, your best life, that type of thing. Because actually, you know, we're only here for a short time life is quick and and bad stuff happens to people good stuff happens too but you know when the, the when the bad stuff happens you kind of think oh god life is a bunch of boop you know the only reason i'm saying boop is because i can't be bothered to have to tick the box that says this podcast ca contains explicit material but life is short we might as well make of it as best we can and one of the ways I have done that is goal setting and specifically focusing on the things that I want to feel and the things I want to bring into my life the people I want to bring into my life the work I want to bring into my life so that first five-year plan was talking about my day as a trailer as a where I would work on trailer music in the morning and then spend the other half of the day with my family or friends 
in my cool open studio <laughs> you know it wasn't a big studio it was around the corner uh, you know it was sort of around the corner it was you know a little sort of office home office type studio because I don't like uh, massive studios well I don't like them at the moment and I have it you know and I have the house that I've visualized uh, you know and I have the beautiful family that I love tremendously that I have visualized and then what you start to find is you become open you have a clear path ahead of you so you relax to things and all of a sudden these opportunities start to crop up they don't necessarily feel like opportunities at the time but you know someone might ask you for something and you're like yeah sure because i'm feeling open to this stuff and then that leads to something else someone might tag you on twitter saying mentioning something about something random like uh i don't know painting miniatures and you go hey yeah bloody love painting miniatures which i do by the way um bloody love painting miniatures you know this is awesome uh and then you start chatting and you find out this person runs a trailer music company you, you know you just don't know what's going to happen but because you have the plan in place of what your perfect day would look like the day where you feel most at ease most calm most happy most content you then start to sort of you know as if by magic oh gravitate towards that scene and those things that you imagined will suddenly start to appear um you know it there are other things to bear in mind if you're not in a good place mentally i.e if you're suffering from anxiety or depression that slows the process somewhat you know and that's why I've, I, I have noticed that, you know, when I land the most trailers is when I'm not working. Uh, I know I've done the work, but I don't get the phone call or the text from Vic saying, huge news, landed a trailer. I usually get it when I'm having fun. I, I don't think I've ever had it when I'm sat down, like, tre entrenched in work. It's when I'm giving off this joyous feeling of, of enjoying myself, all of a sudden, hey, you landed something. So, if you are in a, in a darker space, uh, I'm sorry, and I completely sympathise because I have been there myself. It's not a nice place and it feels like you're basically being crushed. Fear not, it will end. But try and find tools that will help you and get out of the darkness and into the light, into the... <laughs> is this really a podcast about training music? Uh, uh, into the place where you can attract more to your life. And, you know, I'm specifically talking about, for those of you in the audience, to attract placements, to attract contacts, to attract work, and even to attract inspiration. You know, bring that, all of those things into your life in your visualization. You know, even when you talk, even when you write down your best day. You know, I sit down to do work and I work with ease. It feels completely effortless. Writing also, also the other thing I forgot to mention when you're doing this five-year plan, write it in the present tense, not in the future tense, present tense. There are other things that can help you bring this into fruition because I, those of you the the more um i want to say pragmatic but i don't actually know what that word means i i have the sense it's the right word i want but for those of you in the audience who like you know an ikea instruction booklet then you need to think about grabbing a book called the one thing uh that talks about once you've established your end goal you then work backwards so that you can lay a roadmap of single steps that you can take towards that goal. I, I'm a big fan of both approaches. The uh, the energetic, giving off positive vibes man, um, and being open to the universe. But I'm also equally excited by a clear plan of step-by-step -step actions that I can take every single day. And that's what my book's about giving yourself step-by-step -step actions every day that you can take and create the life you want. That's it, guys. That is the five-year plan. I really hope you get something out of it. Um, you know, they messaged me in five years. Uh, 
like I said, you don't have to believe in this manifesting stuff, but it's really good to understand what you want to get out of your life. You wouldn't go into a university education not knowing what you want to get out of it, which for most people is just a degree to put on their CV. You wouldn't do something, like you wouldn't bake a cake without knowing what cake you're going to bake. Having an end point in mind is absolutely crucial for taking the right steps to get there. So like I said, you don't have to believe in manifesting. If you do, awesome high five through, through the universal field, that is. Uh, but you do have to understand the importance of this end, end game. Not things, but feeling. Really clear pictures written in the present tense about what you are feeling, seeing, hearing, smelling, and touching. <laughs> you know, obviously, if it's crude, guys, keep it to yourself. Uh, but you know, that's it the five year plan. I hope you get something out of this, guys. I, I, I genuinely do because it's one of the most fulfilling exercises I've ever done in this space to plan out something. In fact, one of them I wrote, it wasn't a five year plan, but I wrote the plan for the book. Um, I, I wanted to be a bestseller, obviously, doesn't everyone? Um, and I managed to get to the number two spot, not of all of Amazon books, but of the category I was in. And I got a lovely screenshot of my book next to Tim Ferriss's four hour work week. His was number one, mine was number two. Uh, and that was pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, you know, that was, that was my tick box achieved, really. Um, so there we go. You don't have to use this as a big five-year plan. You can use this as your, you visualize your next day. I know Hugh Jackman does this. He does this for visualizing his next day. And, you know, Hugh Jackman's a pre pretty uh, blessed guy and he's actually pretty, pretty awesome too. Uh, I've got a lot of respect for that, for that man. And when I heard him talk about manifesting and uh, day designing, I was like, this guy's even cooler than I thought, you know? Yes! So, uh, you can use this to design your days, guys. Design your weeks, design your life. It's so much fun. Uh, uh, just go and enjoy it. That's the most important part. Don't worry about it, just enjoy it. Just see it as an exercise. Then once you've done it, shove it in a drawer. Set a timer on your Alexa, I don't know. So, five years time, remind me. <laughs> enjoy this, guys. And, of course, as part of your roadmap to being a trailer music, music composer, uh, go check out my courses on the Trailer Music School. Um, I've got the training music course, I've got the hybrid training music course, and I've got the three cinematic piano courses, uh, all designed to help you become the training music composer you want to be. Take care guys, you're absolute legends, good luck with your goal setting.